The following opinions are solely those of Boatest.com and its test captain. Hi, Captain Steve for Boatest.com, and today I'm on a new launch from Jeannot, the NC33. This carries the same DNA as the previous models, all with versatility. I'm going to do a full sea trial and see how she performs. Fully forward, there's a vertically mounted Lumar windlass. A chain and rope road leads out to an anchor roller mounted on top of the bow. 16 kilogram anchor fully forward to the side of the windlass. There's road access and the remote control for the windlass. Down below to the port hand side is the ship's main electrical panel, all touchscreen. The battery switches are at the riser to the stairs leading down below. Fully forward and underneath the master berth, there's a hatch that can be opened up to allow us some mechanical access to the water pump, expansion tank, and this is also where we would have access to the bow thruster. Shore power connectivity is at the transom, well outside the trip zone, and we've got plenty of storage inside for the shore power cord. The engines are accessed from a hatch in the cockpit. Inside of the 220 horsepower D3 Volvo Penta engines turning DP outdrives, there's plenty of space to work around the engines. On the production model for this boat, there will be a platform going across the top of the engine so we have even more storage. Fuel tank is easily accessible at the front. Taking a look at the helm, as you know, did another nice job of making a very functional workstation. Starts with a compass up on top, center mounted to the helm. Four gauges include the trim gauges for the outdrive, fuel, and a steering indicator. Tacks are to both sides of a 12-inch multifunction display. On the left-hand side, lighted rocker switches going all the way down to the Lemco trim tab that have LED indicators on both sides. To the right-hand side, more rocker switches, 12-volt plug, stern drive joystick, digital ignitions, the digital engine controls. In the center, the two Volvo Penta EVC displays and two beverage holders. The steering wheel is mounted to a tilt base, VHF just underneath. And just look at the visibility out of this huge single piece windshield that measures six feet nine inches by three feet two inches. The helm seat is seat and a half width. I'd like to see a bit of a recline to the seat back. It includes a single flip up bolster. There's a drop down panel underneath so that we're, when we're on the bolster, we have a more comfortable position. And if we happen to be sitting, there's yet another drop down panel to make it even more comfortable. But my favorite aspect of this helm, is this opening side door. It has three great benefits. First, I've got visibility through the whole starboard side of the boat. So when we're coming into the dock, no obstructions. Secondly, I can tie the boat up single-handedly because I have such easy access to the midship cleat. And the step that I talked about for sitting on the bolster gives us easy egress out the side door. And lastly, on those hot days, gives us great ventilation on this entire deck. As we got underway, we got a good feel for how impressively she handles in tight confines. Her joystick functionality is what makes it so easy, and the sticks seem to be dialed in nicely to the engines and drives. A bow thruster is optional on this boat, and our test boat was not equipped with it. Once clear of the slips and into the canal, a nudge of the sticks disabled the joystick, and we were back to regular controls and steering, still with excellent responsiveness. The NC-33 has a length overall of 34 feet 6 inches and a beam of 10 feet 10 inches. With an empty weight of 11,830 pounds, 65% fuel, and five people on board, we had an estimated test weight of 13,339 pounds. We tested in a typical South Florida day with temps in the upper 60s and seas running with one to two foot swells. With the twin 220 horsepower Volvo Penta D3 diesels turning DP outdrives, we reached our top speed of 31.3 knots at 4170 RPM. Best cruise was measured at 3250 RPM and 21.3 knots. It was at that speed that the 12.7 gallon per hour fuel burn translated into 1.7 nautical miles per gallon in a range of 206.8 nautical miles, all while still holding back a 10% reserve of the boat's 137 gallon total fuel capacity. We reached planing speed in 6.1 seconds, accelerated to 20 miles per hour in 8.8 .8 seconds, and 30 miles per hour came and went in 15 seconds. With stern drives, the 33 is very responsive to the helm. It's easy to get heavy-handed with three turns from a lock to lock on the wheel, so small movements of the wheel are in order here. That also has an added benefit of helping maintain control at low speeds. Her usual 15-degree roll into the turn occurs simultaneously with a change in direction, so everything remains comfortable. She does have a bit of a bow rise, so I was adding a touch of down trim to the tabs, which didn't seem to affect the performance. She'll also lean slightly into the wind, which again, tabs can correct for. All this is typical and fully expected. During our test, we were in one to two foot swells, and if we pushed her, we could get the hull to slap, but that's not how this boat will be operated. 
At cruising speeds, it was a much different ride, smooth and soft. She'd simply ride over the waves and press into the next one and continue on, over and over again. It's a nice characteristic to have in a cruising boat. When it came time for docking, there are two aspects. One is how easy it is to dock the 33 single or short-handed. That side door not only provides excellent visibility, but it's also so easy to just step out and put a line out from that midship cleat. Once that's secured, the rest is just a matter of tying the bow and stern. As for close quarters, again, that side door, along with the joystick functionality, make it an easy task. It's also this combination that makes the 33 such an ideal boat for someone moving up from a smaller boat. She's pre-molded for a bow thruster, but our test boat didn't have one, and frankly, I didn't miss it. Well, we've got ease of handling and ease of docking, plus versatility throughout, but that's another video. Be sure to look for it. For now, that's my full sea trial of the NC-33 from Jeannot. For BoatTest.com, I'm Captain Steve. We'll see you on the water.